Hello guys, welcome back to Tux Riders and the fourth video of the Applied Numerical Computing series. In this episode, we want to have a look at NumPy, one of the most fundamental libraries for numerical computing in Python. Let's go for that. Okay, Python is the third uh, notebook of the first set of uh, things that we want to discuss and uh, as you can see the title is multi-dimensional data arrays. The, the NumPy library provides a very similar interface uh, to MATLAB for numerical uh, let's say arrays, modifications, matrices, linear algebra and this kind of stuff but there are some minor differences. If you have a working knowledge of MATLAB you can easily get a start with, with, with this uh, with this library. As usual the first step uh, is importing the functions, importing the library and uh, as you can see the, the developer has imported everything but the usual way of importing NumPy, the common way, you know one of these uh, hidden standards is import NumPy as MP so everything will become uh, something like NP, like MP array. But yeah that's also okay here. Uh, uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, the, the fundamental thing is to create is creating these arrays and in order to create arrays the best way to the simplest way is just converting the lists the Python lists you know that from the previous video one of these compound types in Python to 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 these arrays and it can be vectors or matrices with matrices you can define it similar to MATLAB with a comma that is actually a new row and then it comes here to the shape. Shape is something very important, it comes very handy when you start to work with this, when you put your fingers on this, you see that you, you will have some problems with, with shape and people usually struggling with that. Especially for vectors, when you, when you don't see the second dimension, when it doesn't have a second dimension, in MATLAB it is always 4-1. A vector is actually a matrix with one row, but in Python and NumPy, that's not the case. In Python and NumPy, when you don't have the second dimension, it's a vector. And then for, for, matrix, for matrices, it has, you know, multi dimensions like this. So it's very important to, to, to keep in your mind that for nothing is not for one, like MATLAB. And if you want to do, if you want to convert a vector to matrix, then you can. There are different techniques you can use. You can reshape it, or you you can add a new axis, and this kind of stuff. We will discuss them. But yeah, this is very important to to remember. And the size and shape, its shape can be also function, and uh, instead of a property, I mean. And then uh, what is really important to know here is that uh, in comparison to lists, you can say that yeah, we have lists, why do we need a new data type? The, the reason is the, the, the arrays of NumPy are static type and it means that they will have a better performance for practical cases. But you know lists can be of any type and they are dynamically type. So you can see that if we have already defined the type of M by definition of, F, of integer, if you assign a string to the first element, it says that yeah, it's it's not allowed. And you can define type here in this case it's complex, defining it as a complex, that's that's normal. And A range, we talk about this in four loops. So A range is very similar to, to, to the lean space in MATLAB. So you can say from 0 to 1 with a step of 1, from 0 to 10, sorry, with a step of 1, and you, you see that it creates something like this. And it can be also used for, uh, you know, for, for also uh, floating points as the steps. And it, it, there is also another function, linear space, similar to MATLAB, and also log space that you can create, the, uh, you know, the, the, the arrays with the intervals in, in the log scale, as you can see here. So that's the door, door definite, definitely very similar to MATLAB and uh, MG grid. MG grid is uh, similar to to mesh grid, and uh, if you know it, uh, it's very it, it can be very handy for 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 example three D plotting when you need two different grids and you want a, a third class a third variable like Z that is calculated based on these two grids, and then you you with, with the concepts of grid you have the x as you can see that the x values and the y values so when you 
create a mesh grid like this, you have two different X and Y, why they cover the domain of interest for you. And then you can easily compute a new variable based on the value of X and Y in resembling this space, the, the coordinate system. And for random data, it provides uh, really good things for, for ra generating random in any shape and also from zero to one and also normally distributed shape. And, you know, lots of functions. You can find them in a NumPy uh, documentations for Doc to create a diagonal matrix or the zero and one, you know, the applications when you want to initialize something in these kind of programs, in this kind of linear algebra program or matrix operation zero is a zero matrix. So instead of initializing something to zero, you usually initialize variables to zeros with a, with a, sh with a shape of interest. File.io, uh, yeah, NumPy provides some good stuff, although, yeah, I personally prefer to use other libraries like Pandas for this kind of stuff. But yeah, for comma separated values, you can see that it's quite easy to import the data and then uh, plotting that here is a data that this is just beside these notebooks in the repository and you can see that you can import them and you, you load them and then you can plot them and also for writing generating random metrics and then writing that to the to a csv file is quite easy uh, but uh, numpy comes with its uh, own uh, native file format uh, which is npy similar to dot mat in matlab uh, so it, it can be also used for easier uh, file I.O. instead of comma, comma separated values. And uh, let's go for indexing. Now, indexing is quite important and it, it works qu quite similar to MATLAB, especially for, for, single in, for, for single index. You can access the vectors and also for matrix. Uh, with two numbers or according to the dimensions of the of the array or matrix, let's say. And uh, also row or column, you can use the column with, uh, to, to say that, yeah, the row one, every columns. And then when you say column uh, one, it means that every row and then column one. So you can modify the, col uh, the, the, the elements like this, and then you can modify the, the whole array the whole column and for slicing uh, it's uh, you can see that it's from one to three for vectors or for same thing for for let's say for matrices but as I said in the previous video it's a bit different this is another important different to difference to to remember that uh, it's in in Python slicing is like lower upper step but in MATLAB it is lower step upper so everything is the same. You can say that, yeah, for example, first three elements, it would be written like this, no start, but the, the, the end is three. And the elements from index three means three to end. And there is also one minus this kind of stuff. I think it's not available in MATLAB. I, I'm not sure, but I, I haven't seen that. But uh, in Python, you can say that, yeah, the last element, minus one, start from the end. And minus three to the end means the last three items. That's quite useful. And also for initializing arrays, there is another technique. If you want to have, a mo have more control, you can use this kind of nested loops, this kind of you know, embedded loops from Python. We discussed this in previous video. And in, for this case, you can easily access, you can easily control on the columns and rows and the way that you can define your matrix. And for fancy indexing, uh, yeah, it refers to the way that you can define conditional, uh, you know, conditional statements for for controlling the way that you, you a sort of search criterion. Did you want to say that, for example, I think uh, there is a good uh, example here. Did yeah, for example, you say that X is a, a range from zero to ten with half steps. And so it becomes like this from zero to 9.5. And then you say the mask is the, the values, the X when it is more than five and less than 7.5. And the mask is like this, that tells you that the, 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 this condition is false, 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 and then true for this, this, these four values. And then when you say X of mask, this is fancy slicing. It just trims the, the part of the matrix that you want. And there are other uh, functions that you can use for where, dog, uh, and take. There, 
you know, these are these are just alternative methods for for those kind of slicing. That you can see that it's it works the same way as a slicing or fancy slicing. And take is also similar to take part of the that part of the for, for part of the matrix or vector and also choose. And for linear algebra, uh, it refers to the matrix operations or vector operations, matrix vector operations, and this kind of stuff. That's quite easy. This is, you know, the way that uh, Python handles the stuff and NumPy works on a Punnett foundation. So it's quite similar to if you know how to per work in Python, NumPy works uh, more or less in the same way. And you can see that you can perform element-wise and array, uh, array array operator. So in MATLAB, if you want to do that, you should put a point here. So point times a or something, and it's mean it means element-wise. But here it's automatically element-wise. And if you want to do, you will see that. For example, matrix operations, you need to use functions. So yeah, this is actually element-wise, and you can see that yeah, I told you in the beginning of the video that this this indicate this indicates vectors. And then uh, for matrix algebra, uh, you can see as I said here in Pi, in MATLAB, if you want to say that it's uh, multiplications of, for example, matrix matrix multiplication, you can easily say times, but here you use functions. So uh, to me, that's clear that's from the you know from the user perspective uh, it's it's much better than that that none uh, that the annotation that MATLAB uses but yeah and that's these are more or less the same and you can see that you can also have a sort of vector vector and it, it's worked like the inner products and uh, you have the transpose operation, uh, which you can access with it, this kind of properties. And then it allows you to have like uh, inner products of uh, vectors using the notation of element wise, because you do the transpose of the vector, or you can try and use, use this kind of matrix vector operations. And here is it says it yeah it's because of uh, yeah if you wanna if you don't respect the rules of size of the matrices the matrix of op, uh, matrix of op, matrix operations then it uh, gives you an error that it, this is a fam famous error that you, it says that the shape are not aligned so you will face this a lot if you start to work with NumPy and you should, you should always pay attention to to the size of and the shape of the arrays more important than size. And for transport uh, transformation, I, I told you for transpose, and also conjugate for for complex numbers, and real and imaginary part. These are things that I discussed in the previous video. These are very similar to 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 the Python uh, functions. And for matrix computation, yeah, determinant inverse these are quite common for uh, when you want to work with with them, and they can they, they can be quite computationally uh, expensive operations, especially the, the determinant. And inverse depends on determinant, of course. And for data processing, for sort of statistics, standard de deviation, and variance, mean, max, mean, uh, you know, these these are all available in NumPy. It's not a surprise. It's, the library is built for this kind of operations, and it should provide it. And also some this cumulative cumulative sum, and also cumulative products, and the trace means the the sum of the elements on the diagonal the diagonal of the matrix, these are quite common in linear algebra, and NumPy provides uh, proper APIs or functions for that. And uh, a subset is not something important, but yeah, this this is also uh, you know sort of slicing. That, uh, for example, here we have some data, and you say that okay, it's just give me the subset of the data in which this fr the first column is two. In this case, it resembles the February data, and then it says that yeah, give me the the, um, the the mean, the the average of of the of the subset of the data for February in this case for for the third column, and then it uses the same technique to plot the average for for months for different months, but uh, using this uh, embedded loops inside. Python. So uh, I'm sure that you can easily understand this kind of uh, 
syntax after uh, following me on this video. Uh, and then for, for calculation for higher dimensions, higher dimensions are very similar to, to, to two dimensions. It's exactly the same, but you have a, a, a new, uh, let's say, um, axis. And if you, it's when you have more dimensions or even in 2D, it's very important that you perform, you, you specify that uh, the operation should be performed on which axis. For example, in this case, you say that, okay, max is a global max, but when you say max axis one, it means that, okay, it's column by column on a first dimension. And it says that, okay, in each column, the maximum number is this. When we say that axis one, then it goes for the second axis, like the maximum in each row. And these are quite handy in, in action. And for reshaping, this is what I said from the beginning, that it's if you want to convert, for example, vector to matrix or uh, matrix to different forms, you can reshape it. So changing the, the sort of, let's say, the shape of the matrix. In this case, it's a sort of flattening it. So we say that you have one row and then the total column. So total number of elements as column means that just it's, it's one row and then you can see that they are separated as, uh, as columns. It's the same as flatten. You can see that you have the function flatten here. And um, yeah, also for, for new axis, it is another technique that you can use. You see that a vector is like this, no dimension, and you can see that in new axis. But remember, this is mp.new axis because we have imported everything. And then you can have a vector, it actually a matrix with just a sort of linear. A matrix, which which is really important if you want to do matrix matrix operations, and stacking and repeating means that yeah you can you know sort of concatenating things, and uh, you want to add to sort of you know you, you want to con con concatenate you want to just um, keep them together you can you want to add them together and have both versions you can see like like this example that you have a and b defined and then uh, this is actually a and this is b for axis zero and then the transpose of b in axis one so it it comes here and h stack and v stack uh, they do similar things to concatenate on axis zero and axis one respectively and copying and deep copy, this is something that I didn't mention during the video, that when you assign uh, something like here, you see that B equals A, NumPy doesn't copy it if to, to improve performance, you know, to avoid uh, computational expensive operations. But if you want to copy something, it's, so if you modify, for example, here, you can see that we have modified the first element of B, but array A has change it also so this is very important to to keep in mind and if you want to have a copy a true copy then you can easily use the the copy uh, function and iterating over error elements is a simple this is very similar to for loops in matlab uh, sorry in python so when you say for uh, the first thing is uh, is the row and then the element. So you have to say row in M and then for each element in the row. And in this way, you can easily iterate row uh, through the uh, vector matrix, matrix mostly. And if you want to have the index as well, you can use enumerate. So it's, uh, it gives you the row index and row, and you know what this is. This is actually sort of tuple returning tuples as a function when we talked about this in in previous video and for vectorizing functions it's not something that is interest uh, interesting for us we don't want to use this kind of stuff but it means that yeah functions in matlab you can easily pass vector or matrices to to functions but in python here when you say x it it, it, it expects something called uh, some a scalar values and if you want to do that you need to vectorize uh, the functions so uh, yeah this is uh, actually uh, what I wanted to discuss these are things pretty simple and you can use uh, this any and all um, with those kind of fancy slicing and then um, yeah it means that if any of them is true or any all are true so this is actually the way that you can use uh, arrays in uh, in conditions yeah this is uh, all the things uh, that uh, I wanted to discuss 
with you on NumPy, make sure to check this out with the, I mean, this notebook. And then um, I think you can easily, with these examples, you know, NumPy is very diverse. It's very big, it's a very big library. But with knowing just these things that we discussed in this video and in this notebook, um, you can go on, you can work with it in a very efficient way. And this is all the things that you need to know about. If there is something more, you can easily find it with search and they're looking at the documentation of Mumpai. So enjoy it and uh, yeah, see you in next videos. Bye.